I'm bringing in a brand new song I'm ready to see the unthinkable I'm ready for a miracle Hearts praying for a fresh encounter Souls looking to the living God I'm ready for a real revival Oh Holy Spirit Come like a fly, like a fire Holy Spirit fall in this place Fill my heart Holy Spirit come like a fly I'm
There's so many times in our life where curveballs are thrown at us, things that we don't expect, situations that we don't even know really how to handle, God. But you know exactly what to do. So God, it just has, it just has me saying, God, help us to trust you in all things. God, no matter where we're at with you, God, Maybe today is the first day where we trust you, where we trust you completely. Maybe, God, we've, we've tried to do things on our own. We've tried to fix the, the problems that seem unfixable on our own. And, God, we're just getting nowhere. God, help us to trust you with all our heart. God, help us to not lean on our own understanding because things just don't make sense. Help us to look to you. Help us to trust you, God. God, we thank you for your love for us. God, we ask that today you would open our hearts, that God, we would hear what you want us to hear today. That today, maybe God, we would walk out of here a little different than the way we came in. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Well, good morning, church. Thank you for being here and worshiping with us today. If you're online, thank you for joining us online. Before we uh, continue on, why don't you turn around and say hello to somebody. Good morning, church. It is great to see you. We're going to continue on. Uh, thank you again for being here and worshiping with us today. It's uh, a, a little snowy outside. That's something we haven't had to say all winter, so I'm thankful for that, and hopefully we don't have to say that too many more times. So, But hey, well, we just have a few announcements uh, before we continue on with our service. Uh, some things that we wanted to let you know about. Uh, first off, uh, your 2022 giving statements uh, have been emailed out to each and every family. If you did not get those, uh, if you would do us a favor, check your junk mail first because sometimes things just find a way to, into the junk mail. And so if you check that, if you still do not have that, would you email the church office at cgsoffice1 at gmail.com. If you don't remember that, you can find me or ask at the Welcome Center. We'd love to remind you what that email is. Uh, but uh, giving statements are out, um, and so we want to make sure that you have those uh, because, you know, tax time's coming. Yay. So anyways, uh, something else that we want to let you know about is, is that uh, as we continue to work on media and, and uh, putting our services online, we are always looking for more people to help with the media side. And, and, and maybe you don't know anything about media. Don't let that scare you because uh, some things are, are fairly easy. Some are a little more technical. But if you are interested in uh, the technical side of some things at church, uh, would you come and see me? We would love to add you up to be a part of the team. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of work 
work that goes into it, but it is a lot of fun. It is rewarding. And uh, so if you have any questions about that, uh, come find me after the service. I would love to talk to you about uh, the CGS Media Team and how you might be able to play a role in that as well. Uh, we want to remind you that every Sunday morning we have life groups. Life groups is, is uh, a time where uh, we get together, we study the Word of God, we learn and we grow together. Uh, there are classes for all age groups, so there's an adult class, there's a class for teenagers, there's a class for children's ministry as well. Uh, light breakfast and coffee is provided each and every Sunday, and so we would love to have you come and join us for that. Along with that, each and every Wednesday, we have family night. Family night is a time where uh, we get together as the body of Christ and as family, and we continue to, to study and grow in the Word of God uh, together. Uh, again, there are classes for all age groups. There are uh, children's ministry. There's a full nursery available. Um, there is youth ministry, uh, and there are adult classes. There's a class just for adults. There's a class just for ladies as well. So lots of different options. We'd love to have you come out each and every Wednesday from 7 to 8, 10. Uh, we get out in plenty of time so that the little ones can get home and get to bed before school in the morning. And uh, we would just love to have you come and join us uh, each and every family night. Coming up on February 5th, we have uh, uh, just a time of gathering. We call it uh, Discover CGS. If you're newer to the church, maybe you have questions about the church, uh, this is a time for you to ask questions. This is a time for you to get to know uh, the pastors of the church and some of the leaders of the church. And uh, if that's something that you're interested in, there is a sign-up sheet in the Welcome Center. Uh, we would love to have you sign up for that. There is a free lunch that comes along with that. We also provide uh, child care with that as well. And then coming up on February 26th is Discover Membership. If you would like to know more about what it means to be a member here at CGS, uh, that, uh, that session is for you, and we'd love to have you join us for that as well. You can sign up today. There's a sign-up for that, and once again, uh, free lunch will be provided, child care will be provided, and uh, so just uh, some great opportunities to get to know uh, more about the church and what the church offers and how you can play a role in that. So if you have any questions about that, uh, you can stop at the Welcome Center, and they'd love to give you information about that as well. Uh, we're going to take up our offering, lots of different ways that that looks. If you're in-house, there are baskets in the back. Uh, you can uh, drop off your tithes and your offerings at any time. There's also the Church Center app. Uh, that you can download on any smartphone. The Church Center app really has a lot of different tools other than just giving. Uh, it has all the announcements that, uh, that we talk about. It has services. So if you want to go back and re-listen to a message that Pastor Brad or one of the elders have given recently, you can go back and you can listen and you can watch those. Uh, it just has a lot of different uh, great options for you. So uh, download that, check that out. Uh, but it is also a form of giving too that you can do. You can also text 84321. You can text to give or you can go to uh, you can go to our website, website cgs.church, and you can click on the giving tab. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we thank you so much for who you are. God, uh, thank you for the snow, as beautiful as it is. Uh, God, we thank you for the safety, uh, for travel. We, God, we ask in advance for safety on the, the way home as well. Uh, Father God, thank you for the, just the different seasons, sometimes even in one week that we get here in Ohio. And, and so, God, we're just so thankful for who you are, what you're doing in us and through us. God, as we give back to you, God, we ask that you take these tithes and these offerings to use it to further your kingdom, to do your work all across the world. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning. It is good to see everyone. Thank you for being here this morning. This is a great crowd for a snowy Sunday morning. Uh, I knew you could do it. We're all here. And, uh, what a, and if, you, if you're not here, if you're watching online, thank you for tuning in. And if you are a guest, thank you for being here. My name is Brad Keen. I'm the lead pastor. You know, you just never know what you're going to get on a snowy on a snowy uh, Sunday morning, but uh, what, a, what a great group that we have here. So uh, just excited that you're here with us uh, this morning. Uh, we have a special guest with, this, uh, with us this morning, Tom King and his wife. Uh, he's a member of the Gideons, and we're going to hear from him in just a, a little bit. So uh, the Gideons ministry is a ministry that we have uh, just uh, supported for a lot of years here at the church, and just uh, they're just a great ministry, and they put the Word of God, they put Bibles out, I mean, all around, all around the world, and just do an amazing job every year uh, distributing God's Word, and so we're going to get our annual yearly update from Tom here in just a little bit, and just hear about what the Gideons have been up to um, 
this last year. But before we do it, let's just go before our Heavenly Father in prayer and, uh, and just pray for the service today. And, and uh, again, just uh, thank God for the snow. I was sharing with the worship team before we pray this morning. You know, I never like snow on Sunday morning when it starts snowing. You know, it's kind of like the roads get slippery and things like that. And just pray for everybody's uh, safety. But there's something about a fresh blanket of snow over the brown. It just always reminds me of the scripture that God washes our sins and makes them as white as snow. And I just always think of that, the fresh coat of snow. Everything is so beautiful. And that God did that for us in sending Jesus to die on the cross for us. That we have forgiveness of our sins. And he, he washes our sins away. And he makes it white as snow. And so that's something, if you don't like snow, think about your forgiveness this afternoon. And maybe you'll enjoy the snow uh, a little bit more. But just that it's so beautiful to, to have the coat of snow out there. So let's go before our Heavenly Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, and God, we are so thankful that you are a good God, that you're a loving God, that you care for us. We thank you for the beautiful snow. God, we do uh, thank you for safety and protection on driving here today. We pray for safety and protection for those driving home uh, today after we leave here as well. And um, God, you are the author of seasons. You're the author of our life. And so God, we trust you. We give you our hearts. We give you our lives. God, we ask that you would be present here in the service uh, Holy Spirit, you are invited here to do what you want today. Uh, God, we pray that uh, you just bless our, our brother Tom, Lord, as he comes to give an update of the Gideons and all that you are doing in and through that ministry and, and every Gideon that is working uh, to distribute God's word around the world. God, we're so thankful for a ministry like that that will put Bibles in hotel rooms and on college campuses and just distribute it uh, to to, to different parts of other nations and stuff as well. God, we pray for those that just might be sick and uh, that are, are struggling with illness. God, as the temperature changes are up and down, God, you'd heal them, that you'd restore their health to their bodies. And God, we just thank you for this day. God, we just pray that we would be challenged, that we'd be encouraged this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to invite Tom up here this morning to come and, and share. Again, we are blessed to have him here. And uh, so why don't you give him a warm welcome this morning. Thank God you. bless you. It is great to be with you this morning. Uh, I was a real punk. A young man uh, at one of our uh, state conventions was telling us uh, about his, his life. And he said as a teenager, he took drugs before school, he took drugs during school, and he took drugs after school almost every day. He was raised in a non-Christian home, of course, and uh, didn't go to church at all. And one day after school, he was, he was coming out of school, and there were men there dressed in suits. And one of them offered him a little testament, a little orange testament. And he said, I don't know why I took it, but I did. He said, I had no intention of reading it. So I took it home, and I just threw it up on a shelf. This, this man's name is Joplin. And Joplin managed to graduate from high school, but his life continued to spiral down as he was still into drugs and alcohol and all those things that go with it. He got to the point where he felt like his life no longer had any meaning, and he was thinking of committing suicide. And then he thought about that little orange testament he had up on the shelf at home. And he decided, well, I'm going to give it a try. So he opened that little testament, and he started reading from Matthew. And he got as far as Matthew 7, 7, where it says, Ask and you'll receive. Knock, or, I'm sorry. Ask and you'll receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. For everyone who asks, receives. To him who seeks, he'll find. And for him who knocks, the door will be opened. And he said, that's crazy. That doesn't make any sense at all. So he said, okay. What do I do? Well, he was really depressed, and he said, you know what? I'm going to try bargaining with God. Have you ever tried bargaining with God? It doesn't always work, I'll tell you that, okay? Or sometimes it doesn't work the way you planned it to work. But anyway, he said, God, if you're really real, I'm going to give you 30 days to make yourself real to me. Well, Joplin wasn't totally lost, Okay. He said, well, you know what, I asked, but it also said I have to seek. So he said, I guess that means I have to go to church somewhere. So the next Sunday morning, Joplin went to church. By the way, Joplin's from Kansas, 
small town in Kansas, and everybody knew Joplin in that town in Kansas. He went to a church there in that town, and he said, it was so cold. Nobody talked to me. They just ignored me. I was, you know, of course, they all knew Joplin too, okay? So he said, well, I'm going to try it again next week. So he went back again, same situation. Nobody talked to him. They just kind of ignored him. So he said, okay, this isn't working. So he said, I'm, going to, I'm still going to not give up, though. So Joplin drove the next Sunday to the, a little town that was down the road a little ways. And he went to a small church there, and Joplin said, I sat way in the back. That's where the troublemakers sit. I see him sitting back there on the bench, okay? He said, I sat way in the back in case I had to get out of there in a hurry. You know, I, I could get out quick. After the service, a little elderly lady turned around and said to Joplin, is this the first son you've ever been here, son? And he said, or he thought, she knew it was the first time I'd ever been there, but she was just trying to strike up a conversation. But all she said was, would you come back? And as Joplin was leaving the, the church that day, he thought, you know what? She didn't say anything about my baggy jeans or my leather-type biker jacket or my earring or my eyebrow ring. She just said, would you come back? He said, it's just like she didn't notice all those other things. She didn't say, would you clean up and then come back, okay? She just said, would you come back? So he said, I decided I was going to go back. So the next Sunday, I went back to that same little church, and he said, I heard a young man preaching from this book, and he believed everything that he was preaching. And he said, he walked down the aisle one time, and I was kind of in the back there again. He said, and I just kind of saw a twinkle in his eye, and I thought, what is that? I think I would like to have that. And he said, at the end of the service, they had an they had an uh, invitation to come forward to be prayed for. And he said, I was fast in that seat. I was not going forward. There was no way I was going forward. And then he said, all of a sudden, I heard. I don't know if it was in his mind or whether he heard audibly. Ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives. To him who seeks, it, it will be fine. He will find. And to him who knocks, the door will be open. And he said, I was out of my seat to the front of that church, kneeling before the altar. And he said, I had never prayed in my life. All I could say is, God, I'm sorry for the way I've lived my life. And he said, I must have said that 30 or 40 times. Joplin Emerson got up from that altar that day, left that church a new person. And he has never turned around and looked back. The desire for drugs and alcohol totally left him. Today, Joplin Emerson is a pastor leading others to Christ. That wasn't the only blessing of that church that day because there was also a young woman in that church that day that Joplin met later who became his wife, and together they serve the Lord. That's why Gideons do what they do. First of all, you know, those little Bibles can make a difference in, every, in a person's life. And you that are sitting in the back of the church can make a difference in that life too by inviting those, that person to come back or to be in church with you. Thank you for, being, for inviting me today to be with you. Gideon's International is an association of Christian men and women, and uh, we have approximately 270 men and women throughout the world in 200 countries and territories distributing God's Word. Something that happened since the Gideon was here last year is a couple months ago, uh, the Gideon's uh, International announced the fact that we had reached the 2.5 billion scripture mark that have been distributed in the Gideon ministry. Now, the Gideon ministry started in 1899, and at that point, it was not, we didn't hand out any Bibles. It wasn't until 1908 
when uh, some Gideons were at a church conference, and the church conference decided to pay for some Bibles for the Gideons to distribute, and they were distributed in, the ho in a hotel. Well, that, that ministry mushroomed from there, and of course, you know that we, we try to go to hotels all across the country and across the world, actually, and place Bibles. By the way, I will say this. There are some uh, hotels and motels that are refusing to let us put Bibles in now. We need your prayers for that and our prayers too. Um, you know, I said that we have um, women in our ministry too. They're in what's called the, the auxiliary, the Gideon's auxiliary. Let me tell you a story of one of the, the auxiliary ladies. Her church had a food bank that they had, at, and she would go and help uh, at the food bank every week. And she'd take a, a few of these little uh, periwinkle, they're called, uh, testaments with her. These are what are called personal workers' testaments. We buy them ourselves to give out to people with a witness. And this, this uh, lady would take some with her every time she'd go to the food bank. And one week she was there, and a young woman at the, uh, came up towards the end of the day and said, you know, I was here last week, and you gave me one of those little, little Bibles. I've been reading from it all week. And the Holy Spirit nudged the auxiliary lady to say, well, have you accepted Christ? And with tears running down her cheek, the, one woman, the little young woman said, no, but I want to. Can you help me? Well, in the back of all of our testaments, of course, we have a plan of salvation. And that auxiliary lady pulled out one of her little testaments and, and went through the plan of salvation with that young woman. And that young woman prayed to receive Christ right there. So how can you help in this ministry? It's a great ministry, and it's, it's one of those things when, when we get an opportunity like that to share with a person and that person accepts Christ, uh, we just thank the Holy Spirit for moving in that person's heart. And it's just a real joy to us. So how can you help? Well, today you're going to have the opportunity to give, and we thank you, your church. You've been very, very um, generous over the years. And, you know, it is a partnership between us and churches like yours because every one of those uh, dollars that you give goes to purchasing Bibles to be sent, well, to be used here in Wood County or to be used across the world um, and, you know, whenever we hand out a testament, you know, like at Bowling Green State University, almost every year we hand out, you know, somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000 testaments there on, on a Wednesday morning usually, um, sometime in September, October normally. We pray that those testaments change lives is what we pray. We pray that those young men and women that take them will, will read from God's Word and God's Word will convict them. So... One of the ways you can help, of course, is to give to this, this ministry. The other, another way is, like I said a few minutes ago, keep us in prayer. Keep our ministry in prayer. By the way, we pray for your church, too. I should say the Wood County Gideons pray for your church. Uh, I'm from Sandusky County, actually, so uh, my wife and I pray for the churches in Sandusky County. Pray for the pastors. Matter of fact, one of the, our, our, our wives in Sandusky County have, have started a uh, thing called a rolling prayer ministry, where they'll get a carload of ladies together, and they'll go to a church, and they'll pull into the parking lot, and they'll pray for the pastor and the congregation of that church. They pack up, they go to the next church. They do the same thing. They pray for the pastor and the congregation in that church. And then what they'll do is they'll, they'll send a little card just to tell the pastor that they prayed for their church and, their, and him. Or, you know, so it, it, it's a called a rolling prayer meeting. It's, it's one of the things that our, our uh, ladies do in our, in our county. I don't know whether Wood County does that or not. I, I don't know, okay? But it's, a, it's a, again, a way to thank the churches and to uh, honor the pastors and, and the, uh, pray for the pastors and the congregations. A third way that you can help. There may be a man sitting here today thinking, you know what? I wouldn't mind, you know, being in a ministry like that. If you're inter interested at all, see me after church. I can tell you a little, about the, a little bit about the qualifications and the, uh, what it means to be a Gideon. It, it is a wonderful ministry. I've been a Gideon. My wife and I have been in a Gideon since 1999, so 
about 24 years, I guess now. I don't very often do this, but let me finish up. I'm going to read to you uh, a story. And I don't very often read stories. I usually tell them. But I'm going to read a story that's uh, in a book called Witness to History. And it's the book about the Gideon ministry. And it's one I came across as I, I purchased the book. And I, and I was reading through the book. And, I, and I, I read this testimony in the book. And I thought, you know what? That really touched my life. Because I remember... I'm old enough. Some of you might be old enough. Most of you are not. Old enough to remember when the Gideons came right into the classroom and handed out testaments in the fifth grade classrooms. That's where I re received my first personal Bible. We had Bibles at home because we, we were churched. But that was the first personal little Bible I ever had. Okay? And I remember that. And that's what this story is about. There were many Gideon testimony speakers on the circuit, attending and speaking at convention rallies and camp meetings, sharing their stories. Wilma Townsend of Poplarsville, Mississippi, was one of the most impactful. In the recordings from the Gideon's archives, she started, My husband and I lived in Mississippi, and we thought we had everything we needed or wanted. My second son, Otis, was born in 1948. Otis was in the fifth grade when he got a little New Testament in school. I'll never forget the day he came rushing in and said, Mother, guess what? Mr. Gideon was in school today, and he gave me a Bible. I said, Well, that's nice, son. Otis wanted to go, wanted to, go to church, so I took him. One day he came home very excited and said, Mama, Mama, I'm saved. And he had his little Bible open to Romans, and he said, Mama, let me show you how to be saved. I said, you go on, honey. Mama hasn't got time right now. I could see the disappointment on his face. Everybody he met, he would say to them, do you know Jesus? And I would say to him, don't do that. You're embarrassing people. But every day, Otis would say, Mama, let me show you how to be saved. I was in the kitchen cooking, and I started praying, which is something I didn't do. I said, Lord, there is something I need and I just don't know how to get it. I want what Otis has. On Sunday morning, Otis came rushing in and said, I'm almost late for Sunday school. I said, Mother doesn't have time to take you today. That really bothered me. And I started praying again. Lord, give me what Otis has. Right then, the Lord came into my heart. I could not wait to get to church and walk the aisle for him. Otis was so happy I was saved. Then one day they called me from school saying that Otis had a stomach ache. He had a little knot in his side. The doctor said he believed it was some kind of tumor and one of the specialists who examined him. So we took Otis to Hattiesburg. The doctor there said it was a tumor on his intestines that could be removed with little trouble. They took him, in, they took him to surgery and were gone a long time. The doctor came out and said it was cancer. And Otis had a 25% chance of being healed. His father and I prayed. And Otis came through the surgery with flying colors. He gained weight and looked good. The doctor told us that if the cancer came back, Otis would be gone in six months. It did come back to his liver. And he went into the hospital. He kept his little red testament with him all the time. We prayed that the Lord would not take him from us. Otis said, listen, mother, do you hear the music? I said, maybe you hear a train. He replied, no, it's a choir singing. Otis said, daddy, pick me up. And he said, put me back down. I have everything in the world I have wanted. At that moment, God took Otis. The doctor came in and knelt by the bedside. He said, Mrs. Townsend, I have never had anyone touch me Christian-wise as this child has. We went home without Otis, but we knew he was all right. In his casket, we placed his little red testament in his hands. And I knew that he had gone to be with the greatest teacher of them all. I also knew that if I had not had Jesus with me, I could not have made it through this time. Otis is still blessing our family. 
All my sons are now saved, and my grandchildren have been saved. God has been good to me. He could have taken notice before, before he was saved, but he gave us two years in which our entire family came to know Christ. God had it all planned when my son said, Mr. Gideon gave me a testament. Brothers and sisters, thank you for the opportunity to come and just uh, talk to you about the Gideon ministry. By the way, there are Hopefully, when you came in today, you got a bulletin insert like this. Tells you a little more about the Gideon ministry. There's also an envelope in there that's addressed to the Wood County camp. If you didn't bring your checkbook today and you'd like to send a check, you know, you just put it in that envelope and send it. It goes right to the, the treasurer of the camp, and uh, it'll be used to, to purchase Bibles to go throughout the world. God bless you. Pastor Brad, thank you. And... Congregation, thank you. Thank you. So thank you for being here today. Uh, there's a little plaque uh, between two offering baskets in the back. So we have our normal ones with the cloth, and then there's uh, some kind of wicker baskets in the back with some red felt in. That's the Gideon's one. So at the end of the service today, if you want to uh, make, a, make an offering to, uh, to the Gideon's, you can do that. If you want to write a check, go ahead and just make a check out to the church because uh, we'll collect the, the checks and, and the cash at the end, and then we'll write him one, uh, one check for the Gideon's at the end of the service. And uh, if you didn't get one of those bulletins, I know ushers were handing them out, but if you slipped in, make sure you grab one uh, at the end of the service. Let's just uh, hang up here. Let's just pray uh, for our Gideon's and, and pray for Tom and and uh, again, thank you for sharing. Those were very encouraging and interesting to hear how the Gideon started. So I hadn't heard, I've heard a lot of Gideon messages. I hadn't heard, heard that one. So that was interesting yeah. how, and then how the Bible started being spread as well. So two and a half billion two and a half Bibles billion. placed around the world. That's, that's quite amazing. So, well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful for uh, this ministry. God, your word does not return void. And uh, God, we just pray for open doors, even in hotels in this country that are deciding not to place scriptures uh, in there. God, we pray that those barriers would be removed. Uh, God, that your word would go forth, that it be placed, Lord. We've heard stories over the years how people have been depressed and struggling and open up their uh, drawer in, in, a, in, a, in a hotel room and uh, discover your hope and uh, surrender their life to you. And God, we're just thankful for all the, the different ministries uh, that they are involved in, in, in getting your word out. God, we pray for a blessing upon this ministry. You continue to, to bless Tom and his wife and, and uh, the Sandusky camp as well as the Gideon camp in Wood County here. And so, God, we just pray, Lord, that uh, you just continue to use them for your purpose and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you God bless you. Give him another hand, please. <clears throat> It's always good to get some updates from the different ministries uh, that we support. Uh, next week, we're going to hear from the Pregnancy Center. So Rochelle Sakora, who's one of our church members and the director of the Pregnancy Center, she's going to give us an update uh, next Sunday on some things that are happening there. Today is actually National Right to Life Sunday, and uh, you probably saw in your, in your prayer booklet today, if you don't have one of these, we still have another, another week to go in our 21 days of prayer, but that's what we're, we're praying for today. We're praying for life. Yesterday, we were praying for the church and and uh, so just encourage you uh, in that. Uh, hope that you are getting the most out of this 21 days of prayer. It's been fun to talk with you and, and just hear different people that are praying and some different things that God is speaking to you as we go through this 21 uh, days of prayer. It's just there's something powerful about going through some of the same scriptures together every day. There's something powerful about praying through uh, some of the same things each and every day. And so I uh, just hope that you continue in that this next week. If for some reason you haven't done it up to this point, that's all right. Grab a booklet and uh, you can start this week and join us uh, in prayer. We're in week two of our Dangerous Prayer series. You know, prayer is so uh, important for our lives. You know, prayer equals our relationship with God. Prayer equals a relationship with God because if we're not spending time in prayer, if we're not spending time in the Word, if we're not spending time in worship, it's hard to grow, right? Prayer is how we communicate with God. Prayer is how we hear from God. And so it's the same thing with your friend, with your spouse. If you have a relationship because you usually communicate, right? You have a relationship with anybody that you don't communicate with. 
No, no, we communicate. And so the same thing is true with God. And so prayer is one of the ways uh, and an important way in how we communicate with God. It's how we pray uh, and intercede for other people and on behalf of situations and things uh, that are happening, just like in our 21 days of prayer. Yesterday we prayed for the church. Today we're, we're praying for life. We're praying for uh, the unborn. And so it's important to have a consistent prayer life. It's important to have a regular prayer life, a daily prayer life, and really to have prayer as a foundation for our lives. Because everything that we do, every, every aspect of our life should be rooted, rooted and grounded in prayer. Amen? We should be praying about every decision that we have to make. You know, what do we need? Even if you have to, if you're buying a house, if you're buying a car, if you're thinking about, you know, changing a job, if, if, if you're thinking about marrying someone that you're dating, pray about that. Pray about that. Pray and see what God's will is, what his plan is for your life. And so it's important that prayer is a foundation in our lives. It's important that we have perseverance in prayer. Anybody ever prayed for something and never had God answer that prayer? Let me see your hands. I'm going to put both of mine up, right? Yeah, we all have. Uh, you know, sometimes we pray for things that aren't according to, to God's will, really, for our lives. And it's a blessing that God doesn't answer uh, those prayers. Other times, sometimes prayers just take a while. Sometimes we don't understand why God doesn't answer some prayers. And uh, as human beings, we're not going to understand that. But we have to trust that God is in control and God knows what's best for our lives. Amen? And so in this series, uh, you know we're going to just learn about just more about prayer and just praying prayers that, that, that move the heart of God and see what it really means to, to trust God when we pray for the things, the needs that we have, when we ask God to intercede in our life and on behalf of others, when we pray for, for miracles in our life, when we pray for, pray for things that just take faith and, and God-sized faith. And so today, the dangerous prayer that we're going to start talking about, this is going to be a two-parter, is Make me bold. Think about that for a minute. What does that look like for your life? If you say, God, make me bold. You know, my hope is that in this uh, series and in our 21 days of prayer that we're going to go to a new place, uh, I guess a new level in our prayer life with God. Wherever you're at now, that you're going to grow deeper, that you're going to get a little bit closer to God, that you're going to learn something a little bit more about prayer, that you're going to experience God in a new way, in a fresh way. Maybe you've never heard God speak to you before, and you're going to hear God speak to you. Uh, maybe you're going to pray a prayer, a bold prayer, and you're going to just put your faith out there and trust and see God move in your life. And so again, we're calling this series, Dangerous Prayers. And I love the imagery that comes from that. And Craig Rochelle actually has a book out there uh, that, that this comes from, and it's called Dangerous Prayers. And, and this is his book right here. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a great book. Uh, and I love on the front of it, uh, on the cover, it says Dangerous Prayers because following Jesus was never meant to be safe. Dangerous prayers because following Jesus was never meant to be safe. Think about that. Think about what that means for your life. Because sometimes we just want life to be easy, right? Come on. Uh, yes. We just want life to go well. We want life to be smooth. We want everything to work out. We just want following Jesus just to be fun and exciting and, uh, and never have any problems, right? That'd be a great life, right? Well, guess what? Heaven is waiting for you if you know Jesus. And that's, that's, you'll enjoy that in heaven. But here on earth, we're going to have trials. We're going to have tribulations. We're going to have struggles. We're going to have health issues. Uh, we're going to have loved ones pass away. But, you know, sometimes we just want to pray those, those nice prayers, right? The, the God, would you just please bless me? And there's nothing wrong with these prayers, right? To pray for God's blessings upon your family. Uh, you know, sometimes we just want to pray for our food. Sometimes we just want God to make our situations work out, that everything would just go smoothly. But guess what? Sometimes we find out how, what we're made of. Sometimes we grow in our faith by going through situations that kind of put us in a pressure cookie. Cooker, right? Cookie. Pressure cooker. I don't know what a pressure cookie is. Might explode. But in a pressure cooker, when we're underneath stress, that is where we are refined. That is when our faith grows. Sometimes we want God to take us out of a situation when God just wants to take us through a situation. 
so we can learn how to trust him, so we can have the faith and the boldness to live for him each and every day. So what if instead of just praying prayers for God to, to bless our day, what if we just, instead of just praying prayers for, you know, when we go to bed at night, for God to bless our food, again, those prayers are important. Don't quit praying those prayers. Don't quit praying God's blessings upon your children, God's protection around your family. Don't quit praying for those things. But what if we also begin to, to pray some things like this, God, search my heart. That's a bold prayer. God, search my heart and know if there is anything wicked, if there's any offensive thing in my life. You know, there's an example of a bold prayer like this in Scripture that is, that is uh, given by David. And David asked God to look at his heart and to see if there's any offensive way in him. And we find that in Psalms 139. Verses 23 and 24. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Now again, we're talking about bold prayers. Ask yourself right now if you're ready to pray this prayer. Because this is a prayer that you can pray in your own life. This is a prayer that any of us can pray at any time. This is a bold prayer. Think about this. God, search me. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you. And lead me along the path of everlasting life. That's a bold prayer. Because guess what? If we pray that prayer, God's going to turn the spotlight on. And we'll find some things. Or he'll find some things. He'll show us some things that are there. That is a bold prayer. God, search me. Search my life. Look into every nook and cranny. And don't just look at my life, look at my heart. Tell me if there's anything evil, if there's anything wicked inside me. That is a life-changing kind of prayer. That is a bold prayer. You know, when David asked God to test him, to know the, the anxious thoughts, the, the anxious things that, that, that trouble his spirit, you know, for us, that'd be, you know, the things that keep you up at night. What are those things where you lie in bed anxious at night, sometimes in a, in a pool of sweat, worried about this and worried about that. David says, test my heart, look at me, let me know if there's anything, that, what makes me anxious? Is there anything wicked? Is there anything inside my heart? And if it, that isn't uh, enough, David goes even deeper here in verse 24. And he tells God to point out anything in him that offends him. That's a bold prayer. Because we all, when we sin, are offensive towards God, right? When we sin, when we, when, when we walk out of obedience, when we walk out of God's will for our life, I am pretty sure that there is something in probably everybody's life here today where all of us have things that, 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 that God doesn't like, that God wants to do a work in us, amen? Amen. And that's the good news, right? God isn't giving up on you. Don't give up on yourself. But there are things in us. So any of us to pray this prayer and really open our life up like a book before God and say, okay, God, point it all out. Are we ready for that? That's a bold prayer. But these are the kind of dangerous prayers that we're talking about in this series. In verse 24 of Psalm 139, the New King James Version says it like this. And see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So David says, God, check my heart, check my life. Show me if there's any wickedness, if there's any sin at all in my thoughts, in my deeds, in my actions, in my words, in my heart. God, whatever is evil, whatever is sinful, God, point it out and show it to me so that way I can make it right before you, because we're all sinful, right? We all sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. We all have areas in our life that we need to work on. We all have areas in our life that we need to address, but sometimes those things are easier said and acknowledged than done, right? I mean, that's a whole other thing. Sometimes, okay, God, I know I need to work on this area of my life, but then to actually work on it uh, can be another thing that can be challenging to do that. It takes great boldness to do that. It takes great boldness to pray and to invite God to, to look at your heart and to look at your life and, and to reveal those things to you. But the reward here we see at the end of verse 24 in praying in a bold prayer like this is God leading us down the path of everlasting life. Life eternal in heaven 
with him. Here's some more examples of some bold prayers that we could pray. God, break my heart for the things that break yours. There's a lot of things that happen in this world that break God's heart. There's a lot of things that should break our heart, that should move, that, that should move our heart as well. There's a, there's a lot of evil in the world. There's a lot of corruption in the world. And so to ask God for us to see, through, see things through his eyes, that our hearts would be moved to compassion for uh, those that maybe don't have something, those with less than what we have, those with needs, um, those that are, that, are, that are dealing with injustices in the world, that God might break our heart the same way that his breaks. Another prayer that we could pray that we bold is, God, I want to be used by you. Now, when we tell God, hey, God, use us for your purpose and glory, we need to allow him to use us for his purpose and glory, right? Sometimes we have ideas of how we want God to use us, but to surrender ourselves, okay, God, use me for your purpose and glory, however you want to. Or, you know, God, send me anywhere or to anyone that you would have me go to. What a bold, dangerous prayer. You never know where God is going to send you to speak to people, just like the Gideons. You never know. They go on, they go on these Bible blitzes, and they'll go all around the world giving Bibles out. And sometimes they're in fairly dangerous locations. You know, I've been on missions trips uh, around the world, and sometimes you end up in some fairly dangerous situations when you're spreading the good news of Jesus. And so that's why we're talking about these dangerous prayers. You know, Isaiah prayed a prayer, prayed a prayer like this in Isaiah uh, chapter 6 in his response to God's call on his life when he says, Lord, here I am, send me. Another bold, dangerous prayer that any of us can pray at any time. God, here I am, send me to do your will. Send me to the people, uh, you know, that you want me to go to, to, to spread the good news and to tell, tell them about you. You know, that's what we're talking about here in our Dangerous Prayer series. We're not talking about danger like, you know, sticking a fork in a toaster or, you know, doing something stupid and dangerous like that. We're talking about these dangerous prayers where God, do something in me. God, change my heart. Look at my life because I want to be used by you. I want to fulfill the plans and purposes that you have for my life. Dangerous because we're giving God full access and praying for God to change our life. Maybe even in praying these prayers, God changes the direction and the course of our life. And so I want to look with you at some bold, fa some bold faith and some bold prayers. We're going to look in the book of Acts. We're going to specifically look at Peter and John in events that are recorded in the book of Acts. Uh, we're only going to get so far into that this week, which is why this is a, a two-part series. And so we're just going to get as long as we can here in the next few minutes, and then we'll just crash land this baby, and then we'll pick it back up next week. So I'm just going to put that out there right now. There's not going to be any clean landing probably at the end of this, this message. We'll just crash land this baby, and we'll pick it up uh, next week for part two uh, in this, but we're going to take a look at uh, some bold faith, some bold prayers by Peter and John. Just think about those guys and the experiences they had walking with Jesus. Think about those guys and the experience of Jesus' death and resurrection, and then the experiences they had as the church was formed in the world after that. And not just the experiences because of all the amazing things that they saw. Uh, not just because they saw people healed, but they also lived very dangerous lives in living for God. It took incredible boldness to live the lives that they did. It wasn't easy. They faced persecution. They faced trials. They faced beatings. They faced imprisonment. They faced ridicule. They even faced death. Again, as Craig Rochelle says, following Jesus was never meant to be easy. Can you say that with me? Following Jesus was never meant to be easy. Following Jesus was never meant to be safe. Following Jesus was never meant to be easy. It was never meant uh, to be safe. And I think this is one of the mindsets uh, that the church today, especially the, the American church, really needs to embrace, really needs to understand, really needs to come uh, to terms with because following Jesus is not about having some great easy life, where once we give our life to Jesus, everything's just going to fall into order and life is going to be perfect 
on this side of heaven. It's not. That's, that's not what we're called to when we give our life to Christ. Following Jesus is about laying our lives down for him. Following Jesus is about picking up our cross daily and following him. You know, we are to be about the Great Commission. Amen? That's what we're called to do. We're not called to come to church on Sundays. I'm glad you're here. But this is not the fulfillment of our calling in Christ. It's, and then it's not to come twice a week and come on Wednesdays as well. Though it's great when you're here on Wednesdays. If you don't come, you should come try it out. You're missing out. But our life is about fulfilling the call of God in our life. And, and, and a huge portion of that is fulfilling the Great Commission and telling other people about Jesus. It's what we're called to do. You know, the best place to be is in the will of God, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the safest place to be. You know, I used to hear that saying grow, growing up, like, the safest place you can be is in the will of God. And then I went on a few missions trips. I said, no, it's not. I've done some things that look stupid in, 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 the eyes, in my eyes, in the natural eyes, in the natural realm for the sake of the gospel. I've ended up in some, some weird places spreading the gospel. But it was the best place to be because that's where God was, amen? It doesn't mean it's going to be safe. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy. But the best place that we can be is in God's will. It's okay if we encounter persecution. It's okay if we encounter danger for the sake of the gospel. There's, there's been missionaries, there's been people who've been martyred for their faith. That wasn't a safe place to be. But if that's where God had them, that's where they're supposed to be. Amen. Are you following me? We're going to be a great series. We're going to love this. And we're running out of time this morning. So we're going to take a look at some things that unfold in the book of Acts. Next week, we're going to try to get into chapters 3 and 4. Of course, I was going to get into Acts chapters 1 and 2 today. We've not even started that yet. Um, But we want to take a look at just some things that have been happening in the early church as Jesus ascends to heaven, uh, you know, as, as, uh, as death, his resurrection, Peter and John are preaching about Jesus' death and his resurrection and salvation. Uh, They're praying for people. They're seeing miracles happen. They're seeing people healed. And all these things are happening in the first couple of uh, chapters. And, uh, you know, so this is what's going on. They're, They're teaching people that, hey, you can have salvation in Christ. And so the book of Acts is where we first see the church begin. And so I just want to start this before we before we end it to give us a little more foundation. But the church begins in Jerusalem in Acts chapter 1 after Jesus ascends into heaven. So let's look at this. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 uh, and 9. It says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching, And they could no longer see him. So here's the point where Jesus ascends. He goes up into heaven. Uh, He spent his time on earth after his resurrection with the disciples. And then it's time for him to go to heaven. So we have been given the Holy Spirit. Amen. We we sang about it. You know, God is orchestrating this thing right now with the Holy Spirit. We've been studying it in our life groups on Sunday mornings. Uh, It's in our messages right now. and, And we've not correlated that with life groups with this message and or with the music team, we were singing about this this morning. And so you see God is just on a move and we're talking about this stuff. You know, the Holy Spirit is our comforter, amen? He, he's our guide. He lives in us, right? When we accept Jesus into our heart, we invite the Holy Spirit to come into our heart. And yet the Holy Spirit goes before us, amen? I pray he goes before you on the way home this morning or, uh, and makes the roads passable for you. That you stay on the roads, you go home, pray that the Holy Spirit goes. Whenever we go on a road trip anywhere, we pray that the Lord goes before us, that he clears the roadways, he keeps our vehicle running. We pray for that, God, go before us, make our path clear, keep it free of, of, of other drivers that don't know how to drive, so I don't have to lay on my horn and bless them with that. Where's my horn honkers? Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. Wow. We got a lot of horn honkers. You know? But we pray that God would go before us, and and he goes before us, but yet he's living in us as well. So again, I want to invite you into our life groups on Sunday morning as we talk about 
the Holy Spirit as well. And so Jesus ascending into heaven and the Holy Spirit coming was a key in the church coming into existence and the church growing in the world today because the Holy Spirit is not limited by space and time, but Jesus was. The Holy Spirit is not limited by space and time, but Jesus wants, Jesus was. So it was important for Jesus to come into the for Jesus to come. He died, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. Now the Holy Spirit has come, and guess what? The Holy Spirit lives in me. The Holy Spirit lives in you. The Holy Spirit's going to go before me on our way home, and he's going to go before you today, just as the Holy Spirit is, you know, sometimes our brother Bishop George is watching in Africa. If you're watching George, God bless you. The Holy Spirit's with him today right now as well in Africa, right? So the Holy Spirit can transcend all this time and distance and space, but Jesus, where he was, he was one person. He was limited by his earthly body. He was able to do amazing miracles and works, but it, he was limited, just like we are, to the place that you're at. Are you following me? Yeah. The Holy Spirit comes, and he's everywhere all the time. All right, so we're going to pick that up there next week. Um, maybe this is going to be a part three. I don't know. We didn't get near as far as I thought I'd get today. Uh, but anyways, this is going to be a great series, uh, again, Week two of it, uh, we're going to continue talking about this boldness next, next week, looking at uh, the early church beginnings, Peter and John, some of the different miracles that they were praying for, things that they were, that, that they were doing, and the boldness it took to live for Christ. So think about that this next week. Think about boldness. Think about bold prayers. What are some bold prayers? What are some things that you can be praying for your life? Maybe it's God, hey, show me if there's anything offensive in my life towards you. Maybe it's, you know what, God, I've been sensing the call. You've had a call on my life to, to go into ministry. God, make that way known. God, I've been sensing a change in something. God, give me the boldness to make this directional course in my life. And so be praying. What are some bold prayers that you might pray, pray and see how those prayers might change your life forever? Why don't we stand and let's close uh, in prayer together this morning. Again, if you uh, did not get one of the, the bulletins for the Gideons. Uh, we have some at the back. Our ushers will be back there. You can grab one at the end of the service. Again, if you would like to make uh, a donation, make an offering out to uh, the Gideons, you can write a check to the church, uh, place it in the offering basket for them, uh, place your church offering in the other basket. Again, you can make the check out to us. Uh, you can put cash in there, and we will write them one check this morning. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray, God, that you'd bless this offering for the Gideons as well. God, use it to further your kingdom here in this region and around the world. And God, we pray that as we uh, continue in our 21 days of prayer, God, as we continue in this series for the next several weeks, uh, God, that you would help us to pray those dangerous prayers, those, those bold prayers of God, take a look at our heart, take a look at our life. God, Use us for your purpose and for your glory. And God, we do pray for safety and protection because this place is full today on a snowy day. And we give you thanks and praise for that, that we could gather together and worship you. God, pray for your blessings again upon the Gideons, upon Tom and his wife and the work that they're doing. And uh, God, we're just so thankful to partner with them in ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, again, if you uh, would like to join us for our Discover uh, CGS class September or uh, February 5th, please sign up or our membership class. God bless you. Have a great week.